Hey guys, Rayon here, bringing you the Vanguard video I promised literally over a year ago. Um, this is actually going to be a deck profile over the deck I played at Springfest Ohio in the team event. I actually brought my team, Team Alpha Attack, into top 8 with a 5-1 record, so... Awesome! I've been playing this game for forever, first time actually topping an official event. So excited. Good job, team. We lost down the first round top 8, but whatever we got there, that's the important part. Anyways, this is my Gear Chronicle deck, because I have been playing this class as came out. And let's just get started. Last time I tried doing this, it was way too long. Alright, so, get started. I am running the dual starter with Chronodran and TikTok Worker. I know a lot of people uh, talk about me or whatever. Chronodran is basically in here because if you time leap him, he turns into a Chrono Jet by going to Soul. So, even if you have absolutely no plays, even if you have nothing to do on your first turn stride, you can still actually make another column off of him. It guarantees your Chrono Jet in hand it, so you're able to stride next turn. And he's just like, has the biggest target on his head, that's why I play him. To say this, you do something out of nothing. Anyways, this guy's actually the Star Gear Chronicle Forever. There's been a lot of rulings revolving around him and combo cards like Malim. That basically his effect is he goes in soul after you attack and now you can time leave that unit. So she says, after, well, her and upstream, she says that when she attacks, she goes back into the deck and gets you a grade zero like this guy. Then his effect actually resolves at the same time. So your melee would return, you're not missing your time on her, and you're basically getting another attack off while setting up another one of him. It's a really good combo. The ruling on this was up in the air a lot. I didn't realize it was going to be ruled that way at the event, otherwise I would probably have gone ahead and run two or three of him like my opponent and... He must have even did, but whatever, live and learn, it's a thing that happens. Anyways, sorry about that, trying this new camera. Uh, da, 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 da. Run four Chrono Jets, because he is was at least a main star Gear Chronicle. Got two of each signed art, I need to get more of him. Um, star of Gear Chronicle, I'll try skill, you can kind of blast one to spin something in, awesome. Um... I mean, spin something, and it basically returns a card to the bottom of the deck. That's one of the things Gear does. And then he has a Generation Break that gives him a Guard Restrict attack. It's not as good as it used to be with the generation of Generation Guards, but still pretty solid. As long as you're boosting him by something, you should still be able to break, like, 21, 26, and it's still a pretty threatening attack, unless they have a G-Guard. So, not as good as it used to be, but still amazing. Of course, his best friend is 3 Bailey. Ballin'. His, with the fact that on stride turns into this dude, so you're always on your crow jet. And he does have an on-hit rear guard effect, so that's pretty cool. Doesn't matter as much the fact they just run into seven chrono jets. I see a lot of people experimenting with square one dragon. It's, I basically went into this um, tournament with philosophy. I'm going to master all the old stuff. I'm not going to bother testing anything new, and we'll just see how that goes. So that's why I don't have too many of the new cards from the set seven here. But three valley is great, seven chrono jet dragons. Excuse me. Moving on to twos. For our friend History Maker Dragon, he basically is his counter blast one time leap. Time leap, if you didn't know this game, is Gear Chronicles keyword. Basically, when a unit declares a time leap, you could upgrade one of your cards. So, say, time leaping him, he'd be like, alright, mine until no turn. Turns into a grade three from deck. What's up? I have another attack now, and I'm thinking out the deck. So, it's a good column to give for chain combo attacks. And he basically is stable for that because time boss one time leap dude. Awesome. Also got two of him as a stable. On place, downgrade one card, so it sends one back to deck, and then he they can call up a card that's one grade lower. Not as good since they get a free call off it, but whatever, you're probably hitting a starter with it. Point part is a turn two play and I could get rid of a lot of threats, so that's what he's going to. Move on to my grade two techs. I run two of the new guys, Steam Might Mudar. He's an on hit time leap, which is kind of cool because he gives you on hit effects, which make him very threatening. Obviously, Vanguard's, your opponent's going to want to stop him, so they stop more attacks. And um, if he is bound for any reason, it's a lot better than other decks, but um, if he is bound, I could call him as plus two, so he becomes 11k. Very, very good card. My other tech, because I, once again, because I didn't know the ruling on the whole upstream thing. I said to go with Marion instead. She's still solid, still gets a plus four, but
but just, you know, doesn't return back and get you a grade 1 RS, so. Good card, did get in there. Just probably, once again, the whole upstream thing, I'm not going to say anything else on that. Live and learn, my personal mistake. Grade 1s. Run 4 Strider. I've seen a lot of argument between, like, 3 Starter, 4, or Grade 3, I mean, Grade 3s, or, you know, the way I did. Just personal preference, I've experimented with a lot, so, whatever. Four perfect shields, of course. Not much to say about these. Uh, except for I need more SPs. <laughs> Actually, pulled the SP pack, made me really happy. But, um, yeah, just kind of, if you have another copy in, in there, it's unflips one, so really, really good. Because it solves a lot of your kind of blast issues with like, not having to play any specific decks. So it's really good for your... Of course, million we've already talked about a little bit. She swings for 11, goes back and gets regraded zero, which set up your starter play, starts with a lot of triggers. Your Chronicle actually has a lot of grade zeros you want on board, so she's a really good combo piece. And has, like, one of my favorite flavors and arts of all the Steam mains, so... Wait for the deck. Bloop! One GG. A lot of people go between one and two. It's your standard, on call, so last two draw card. <sighs> Excuse me, part was a little hot. <sighs> and... Your Chronicle has, like, a half and half soul engine, so I feel the one is enough. Two is acceptable, I can see it played either way, as just personal preference once again. She's a great target for your um, career gen play. So you time leap into her, get out of the jet, swing 16 with that call on me, you just draw a card. So, really good attack. Great combo. And of course, my personal preference for the deck was two Steam Fighter Nanaya. This guy has another new card. He gets, well, you can read right there. Um, when anything is placed in binds for any reason, he gets plus four until in turn. Whenever you time leap, you're binding yourself, so he gets chewed from that. And there are new decks that do bind more, so. He's a really good combo piece. Usually by tailing one card, I can make him a 10k booster. Does the old stuff. Got in there a couple times. Solid card, I like it. Plus, that was that. <laughs> Alright. Finally, we got zeros. For the script. Very standard. Need one more of the SP because I am a horrible person like that. But, um, standard crypt for Gear Chronicle just goes in the soul of the Chrono Jet. Plus 5 draw card. He's really good because of next age. Basically guarantees that you get a second triple drive. Just that your first one is hidden and automatically gives you plus 5. Makes Chrono Jet swing 21 by himself, which is great for the guard district. And has a cool hat. Cool hat Chronicles. Got 3 of the sand trigger. I see a lot of people run 2, once again, personal preference. When he's time lapse, you draw 2, shove him back in the deck with another card. So it's really cool, helps you cycle in triggers. Gives you a good time leap target if you have nothing else to do. And this is also a great target for um, your melee plays if you don't do anything else. So. This all card triggers back to deck. Awesome. Four heals. Four Liru. Only run a Liru, not the Dalek. Unless you're running a Tiger Jet, I guess, whatever. But good heal is, is a heal. And finally, five normal crits. I'm a horrible person, so I run five different arts. Really confusing, really annoying on the deck list, whatever. Criticals are very, very good in your Chronicle because you want to swing hard, you want to swing fast. And when you get your recent turns, you want to punch them in the face a lot. Right. Moving on to strides. Of course, your Chronicle is the stride-based deck, so this is like the main start of the show. Start with two Metallica Phoenix. New card came out of the start of the deck. He's basically on Declare, you can time leave bad dude, so. Great, like I said, with the Chrono Dram play, with really anything you want to chain attack. He sets up combos, basically. If you look at it, Gear Chronicle has two main types of turns. He's the card advantage turn because he gives you multiple attacks. Whereas next stage is the attack um, combat turn where you just restrict your lot of guard. Gets the card, solid, all you have to do first cost flip a dude, so you flip that, or more likely that. Start with him, I guess. Um You never actually play him. You might, but you never actually touch this card. He's literally there just to flip so you can run your engine. This card um, Crane Revolution is actually good though. Uh, just on stride, kind of blast one, turn over a dude, and you spin the field. Awesome. Great removal. Unfortunately, it takes up two slots. I do kind of like the horse better, but this is the standard engine. You gotta run it. Once again, I almost never went into him, but when you do, when you need to control, it's good. This card though, unlike Command, is actually a good card. Seabreeze basically lets you stride when your opponent's trying to do the grade 2 game or. Just can't ride in general. And it's a main phase effect, so you can step your board before you do it. 
Now the skills basically can't bust two discard a card and you stride him. Amazing. Gear Croc now has an answer to early game decks. And it's great. Great, 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 great. You should hopefully not be able to not need to use them, but when you have to, it does enable you to go for the win. Salt card. Of course I've talked about him a lot, not much to say. Next stage is a very good card. I need to whore out two more of these. Um, basically, I've talked about them enough. After he attacks, counter blast one, discard three, flip a dude, and he reinstates a script jet. This means you're swinging 26 with him, plus whatever you do. Then pop out the next stage, goes into a jet, and he swings 16 plus with his guard strict. More likely with the boost, so he's going to be 21 plus. And yeah, it's just a uh, recent Vanguard. They're very good in this game. This just happens to be standing some guard district. Solid. Finally. It's going a lot faster than last time. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Finally, this is a thing that I think has changed the entire clan around completely. The introduction of Generation Guard. It's basically, it's a new kind of defensive stride that, well, you discard a heal trigger instead of striding and becomes a guardian. This is great because it means that Gear Chronicle can play first now. Like I said, the deck was stride based, so it used to be completely restricted by your opponent just playing early game decks or whatever. Now you don't care. You just ride your Chrono Jed, you say, well, What's up? Come at me. Only that, she also counts as a stride. I mean, not striding, but also counts as a card is energy zone. So it does enable generation break, which means you can go live off of just G Guardian once. Once again, it shouldn't be something that's needed, per se, but, like, it has made the deck the most playable thing ever. And on top of that, ours is pretty good. Run for Luru. Her effect is basically the cycle and a trigger and a non-trigger unit, so two guards back to deck, including probably the heal you guard with. And get 20k shield, so 31 stops, I can of a stride. Awesome. One of her. I'm a horrible person, I do run 5, there are times we need it. She sends back a non-trigger to call a grade 0 out, so, like I said with Maitland, there are a couple of zeros that you do on a field. Awesome. 35 guard. Awesome. SP. Awesome. And last but not least, because that was 15 cards. This is my personal tech. I'll explain very quickly, because the video is running long. Um, for every card face up in your G-Zone, you could give something plus 3. This is amazing. You flip a lot of strides, you G-Guard a lot. He is a great finisher if they somehow make it through all of your... Fantastic stride turns. Also, he lets you upgrade to so like you could call trigger from hand, make it uh, melee or something. But oh, it's a great finisher! I love it. Everyone should run this. Anyways, don't want to make this video too long because my YouTube's weird. But this is my deck. Like I said, I went five one, and then lost to another Gear Chronicle player in Team SOV. So like in the description below, I'll try to put up a more avid description of how the tournament went later. And maybe some other builds like the new Crown of Hager build, but for now, this is Ray on Sign Outs. Be comment, subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys whenever I post the next video. Peace!